G'day fellas and welcome back to another casted game spawning in on the east of the map. It is Sho and he is going to be playing some Mongols for us. Now for anybody unfamiliar with Sho, I will leave a link in the description over to his stream. He is an ex StarCraft 2 pro. He is incredibly talented. You should be able to see in the top right hand corner of your screen. He's ranking up there, obviously playing the Mongols today and he is going to be in a great position because this map that we are playing on is Danube. So already going to be dropping down that Uvu. Can I get some Uvus in the YouTube comments? I know you guys love that Uvu when I say it like that, but uh, I, I know it's actually got a different pronunciation. I think it's Ovu or something like that, but you know, I, I just can't help it. I just, Uvu, it just gets me. It just gets me every time. And anyway, his opponent, a fan favorite, the enemy on the other side of the map. It is, of course, Salami1. And yes, you will remember him from the 100 Scouts video. He is definitely a fan favorite. The way he plays the game is a little bit different to many other Delhi players. So I'm, be, I'm curious to see exactly how he's going to be doing uh, this game. So going up against the Mongols uh, in this game, I think the last one we watched him play, he was playing against the French. And uh, interestingly, going for a double scout opening. Now, keep in mind, we are playing on a water map here. This is Danube. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And you can see he's placing his dock down a great position here to have this dock down. Now, keep in mind, the Delhi are very good in age one on these hybrid maps, especially good against the Mongols. And we might have a little bit of trouble already because I don't think this dock's actually going to get up. Show is in a bit of a bit of a difficult spot because not only did his dock not get up, his villager went down as well. If another villager comes out to tap away at this, it probably will die. This is two scouts and that is a long distance. And it really goes to show, you know, if you are going to play, it goes to show, I can't believe that. I, I can't believe I just said that. It really goes to show that if you do try and place that dock a little bit more greedy, get it in a uh, better of a position, that you are opening yourself up. Had he come in here with the dock, it would have been a different story. And look at that, the villager going to get chased away. Salami really picking up on this, doing a great job here. Nice and early and preventing his enemy from even getting out onto the water. And to be honest, I would say so uh, at this point. Can I, wait, can I just say, why is it so bright over here? I don't know about you guys. It just, it, like over here, it's really dark. And then we get over here and it's like sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Salami going to be opening up with the double dock. I actually like this a lot. Uh, I don't think that there's anything that you can do to stop Delhi uh, in age one uh, on, on water maps. Uh, I played a lot of games against them as them. And they are just so incredibly difficult to stop. So really, really nice stuff here from Salami. We'll Take a look over at his base, see what he's up to. Uh, once again, Salami is known for this absolutely beautiful... Uh, I, I guess this has got to be a monument that is quite advanced. I haven't actually seen anybody else with this monument. And it almost looks like the elephant's got a flower on his head. Can you guys see that? Have you seen what I'm seeing? Elephant with the flower on his head. Anyway, uh, that is, <laughs> that's what's up in Salami's base. Not a lot. He's just got a lot of villagers, just a few, a handful on uh, on food just to maintain that uh, all-important villager production. Now going to be moving ahead with the fishing boat. And the fishing boat going to be coming out and doing some scouting here. I do like this. Uh, so the villager, oh my god, Salami just so on the ball, realizing that his enemy probably was looking for a dock down there and subsequently... Uh, gonna be looking to uh, shut it down. So really good job of using the fishing boat in the early game to his advantage. He's got four, uh, three fishing boats out here towards the main area. And I, I suspect that this is like, honestly, at, at this point, this is already like a good game uh, for the Delhi player. Delhi is so far ahead from this point. And you guys might not think that this is something big because obviously, you know, the the, um, the, the player for, or the, the, the Mongol player is going to be able to transition, right? He, he's going to be able to go into whether he wants to age two archers, whether he wants to look to fast castle, something like that. But Salami has essentially got himself a double town center in the middle of the map. That's essentially what this is. And there's a lot of food on uh, on this version of Danuneb. Danune. Oh my god! I'm just gonna call it Danube. That's that's what I, <laughs> that, that's what works for me. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand food just here. Then there's also eight thousand food down here as well. If he wants to go chuck a dock down there. Doesn't really look like there's any other food up here towards the north. So he's going to be a super duper happy camper uh, up here with... Oh, I think I, I, I might have missed this one. 9,000 food. So he is doing really, really well. Needs to cancel. Show needs to cancel this dock. Otherwise, he will lose, lose the resources from it. In fact, uh, just by not canceling the dock, he's actually losing the resources that Salami is burning away at him. So we'll take a look from the perspective of Show and see exactly what he's up to. And... Is that a pasture? I, th I think he's made a mistake. Oh, this is terrible from Show. He's placed a pasture out here thinking it was a girl. Now he's... He's going to have to run all the way back. Oh, Show. 
Oh, it's terrible. I think he's only- yeah, he's only realized now. Wait a minute. Oh, that's a pasture. Oh, you're not meant to be a pasture. You're meant to be a gur. And now the gur does go down. I, look, I, I've made the mining camp and the lumber camp mistake many, many times. More than I would like to admit. Now we do see that pasture going to be coming back as well. I've made that mistake more times than I would like to admit. So it's no surprise to see Mongol players making that mistake with the pasture, with the gur going down here as well. So look, show if you do watch this back, mate, I understand. I understand completely. I've been there before. I've been there before. But now we see Salami already going to be going up to the next age. Going to be dropping down a mosque. So this is going to be the first mosque of the game, coming in at five minutes. So I would say a little bit late, but keep in mind, he did go for a double dock here. I'm very curious about the double dock, what the decision was behind this second dock. Because at the moment, it, he's only got six fishing boats out. It's not a huge amount of fishing boats. It's not particularly going, you know, double dock booming like crazy. He's just sort of, he's just keeping tabs on his enemy. And I love the fact that he opened the double scout. Is so smart against the Mongols as well. Really going to help him out. And it looks like he might just be going straight for a fast castle here. He might recognize that his opponent is a bit behind. Yeah, oh, he totally recognizes. So his opponent tapping away with eight villagers here. In the transition period for him, he's not going to have a lot of options when it comes to resources. You can see there's just so few villagers on each of these resources here. Tapping away with eight villagers, trying to get up as quickly as he can. He's going to be monitoring this Uvu. This is a really good indication uh, when you're playing against a Mongol player. Just keep this Uvu under watch. And that will tell you what their plans are. If you spot an archery range, you can expect archers. That's, that's that's a great, that's a great observation, Drongo. But in, in all seriousness, they're not going to be dropping an archery range down here and leaving it. They're going to want to be getting it over here so that they can get that double production out. If they do, then they're just playing a much weaker version. So now you can see that villager coming out towards the Uvu. Can't got to be careful. Also, look at this, another cheeky dock coming down here to the south. The Mongol player trying his best to get up here. But you see, the archery range, if he spots this out, he knows. Okay, my enemy's looking for some sort of aggressive H2. And once again, Salami going to be getting a very nice pick off here. Now, one of the things I will note before anybody sort of asks some questions about it, the scores. You might see that Sho is up 100 score. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. The Mongols... The way they play at the moment, I'm not sure exactly why it is. Uh, they're a little bit bugged when they unpack and repack their buildings. I think essentially the way it works is, okay, let's say you have a Gur here that's 100 resources and you unpack it. When you repack it up, like when, when you get it back out and, and like relocate it over here, I think it then adds on those extra resources like you've just basically made a brand new Gur. So you can imagine if you, when you're doing it with the town center, it's basically like it's giving you 900 resources into your score. So it can really start to add up over the course of a game. So I would just say that, you know, in this game, don't really pay attention to score unless Salami is winning. And then you could probably make that assumption. But, you know, at this stage, I would still assume it's pretty even. And Salami being so annoying out here, with these scouts, uh, one of the things that Sho can do is just hit this herdable sheep. Uh, that's really, really frustrating. Got our light junk coming out. Now, you guys would be aware these light junks are actually quite strong, so I'd be curious to see how Salami's going to do against them. But uh, he is actually now aging up with 17 villagers on this landmark, going up with the House of Learning. So Salami, not, not messing around right now. That is the best way to say it. 17 villagers on his age up. I, I casted a game earlier today. There was like three villagers on the age up going to age three. I'm like, nup, nup, nup. You, those are rookie numbers. These, these are the correct numbers. That's how many villagers you want to have on that age up. And look at the fishing boats actually turning around. Salami doing a great job healing up his fishing boats at the same time. So they they go inside the dock right there and they are going to heal up inside the dock. Oh, it actually died. The, the fishing boat actually died inside the dock. It's a wonderful bug. I gotta love it. Magadai now going to be coming out for his opponent's show and show looking to head towards that gold mine. Obviously, he's got that calm there that's going to provide plenty of line of sight. And now those villagers do have to fall back. There's not going to be a lot of gold here for Salami. Do note, he hasn't actually captured any sacred sites at this point. There's one down here to the south, one in the middle of the map, and of course, one up to the north on this uh, almost... A, it's a bit of a mountain. Look at that, the way that it comes up like that. That is definitely a bit of a mountain. But now, S Salami, got to be a bit careful here. Villagers managing to hand in those uh, those all-important wood lots and uh, now going to be heading back towards the town center and over towards the front of his base. So he's got plenty of gold around here. So not only does he have this one gold, which he's going to be putting a tower on, but he does have a double gold mine right next to each other. That's a great spot right there. Actually, there's a lot of good gold down here on this South Island. This is definitely where a lot of the late game fighting is going to be happening, I suspect. Going to try and get up this outpost, but you can see the Mangadai just having so much trouble. Look at they, they barely do any damage. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, they obviously do have their textile upgrade here. Going to be able to pick off a first villager. Second villager going to go down unless he gets it inside. It pick, chooses the wrong villager to go 
inside. Now those scouts going to be coming back. And now we've got the double light junks coming out against Salami. He really probably should have got some Dows out at the very least. These are going to get absolutely melted here as he does try and get them inside the fishing, uh, the, the docks rather. But now Salami definitely in a bit of a difficult spot, losing that scout as well around the back of his base. And obviously it's not a terrible consequence, but at the same time, you want to avoid losing that scout. Six villagers out here on the gold mine. And now the Dows, uh, well, there are no Dows rather, the light junks are going to be able to sort of uh, neutralize this fishing. We'll take a look over at his opponent, see exactly what he's up to. He's got a couple units around the back here, just the Mongol Khan. And looks like the light junk as well. But now, no fishing boats out for him. So he's going to be able to neutralize this. And now it looks like he's doing a bit of... Okay, I thought it was a bit of deer hunting there for a second for show. But now show double archery range. So we did say the, the manga dice that are already out. But it looks like he's going to be looking to go into the castle age. We can see he is slowly working towards that. About to drop that off. And probably going to be dropping down, I would suspect, a, um, a, a, a step redoubt. Uh, probably over here as well on the gold mine. That's probably the best spot. Is that a cruel tie? There's no way that's a cruel tie. No, it's a step redoubt. Okay, he's just he's just put it on the on the on the wood line for now. Uh, so probably going to move that over eventually. So one of the things to talk about uh, wh while we sort of got this little bit of a lull uh, in the game, obviously there's a attacking that's going on. We'll actually switch back to show uh, for the moment just so that we don't get that. Is late game resources. Okay, so that's what you want to be fighting over. You want to be fighting over gold, stone, all that sort of thing. When it comes to the mid game, now you can be fighting over these boars. Okay, and now against Delhi, they're not going to be fighting for those boars. They'll let you have them. Okay, but one of the things they won't let you have are these gold mines, and that's what's going to be so important. You can see there's an 8k gold mine here. Was that a... I think that was a demo. Uh, that, that had to be a demo. I'm 99% sure that was a demo. Yeah, that was a demo. That was an explosive down. I apologize. I did miss that one. Uh, we, we saw the, the, the remnants of it as it went down. Another demo going to be coming out now. Apologies. A little bit of a graphical glitch just down here. That is not on your screens. Uh, that, is, that is in the game. So do not worry. Your monitor is not going out. You're not going to need to claim the warranty on that one. Uh, that is everybody who is experiencing that together. But uh, now we've got the next one that's going to be coming out. And he's just probably going to be blowing this one up straight away. I guess it makes sense, right? Is he, is he just going to... Go look for the dock of his enemy? No, he's going to turn back around now. And blow it up. There she goes. So, one for one. What kind of trade is he getting on that? So, we've got 160 and 80. I think it's it's a pretty poor trade, actually. 160 and 80 versus 120 and 90. You know what? It's not a terrible trade. I'll be honest with you. It's about a 30 resource difference. And I, I tell you what, I'd take that every day of the week. Um, show now reaching the castle age himself. Salami moving in and looking to find a couple of villagers here. He's going to be able to get a shot on one. Does he manage to get the pick off? Let's see if it gets the swing in the air. The swing did go, but it looks like the Lancer is going to go down. So unfortunate there for Salami, losing out that very first Lancer. But obviously he's up in the castle age. He's very happy. Explosive down now coming out. And God, that does a lot of damage. Why do explosive downs do so much more damage than the other ones? The, the Chinese uh, ships, they do like 200 damage with like 300 to warships. This is 500 raw damage with 200 to warships. That's ridiculous. They're gonna like, they three shot a dock. That is absolutely hilarious. Um, wow. Okay, that is a lot. So he's gonna begin moving down there. Probably a villager gets sent out from Joe to heal that one up. Uh, he's gonna try his best. I'm assuming that we've probably got some more explosive dows that are gonna be coming on the way. Salami's resources here definitely starting to bank up. He does manage to find this and targeting down the docks. Let's see how he goes. Uh, it, it, apparently it one shots it. Who the hell knew? Uh, uh, apparently they just get one shot by two. We did the math. Well, it, it was it was 500 damage with 200 against warships. That was a thousand. It had 1,474 health. I don't know how the numbers work in this game. I don't know who the mathematician is behind it, but I want to have a chat to him because his numbers are absolutely off. This game and its numbers, like I love the gameplay, don't get me wrong, but I absolutely cannot stand the numbers. Salami now going to be raided out here a little bit as well, managing to save himself on water. Got to get those fishing boats back out and working, managing to get inside the, the town center with the majority of these villagers back here. And I don't think a single one of them did go down. Now, keep in mind, he does have his textile upgrade. Now, I think both of these players actually have their textile upgrades no no show does not have his textile upgrade so we've got uh, salami doing his best to try and hold on um, a little bit i don't know whether he's miss macro or whether he's going fast imperial here i re i really don't know um he, he probably suspects he has a bit of a window but there's just not a lot of infrastructure from him like realistically there's one two stables and a barracks that's out the front we're sitting at 14 minutes here and he's got so many resources in the bank it really makes me scratch my head and think well wh what's he up to what is this crazy cat up to? Uh, we'll take a look now at Sho. Uh, Sho is yet to rebuild a dock, but obviously has this one remaining light junk, which is out. And now going to be coming in and harassing his enemy on the wood line back here. 
We see the attack speed arrow going up into the air. Oh, all the monks popping out at the same time with their relics. Do a triple wallolo. He trying, he's trying the Fitzmo strat. This is the triple wallolo. I do like this from him, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Definitely not enough when you've got cavalry like that. That was very, very cool. I, I love that they all popped out and they just had their relics in hand. I didn't even see him pick up those relics. So very nice job from him. Uvu's now been depleted. He's going to have to move out to his next one. He's up to 1,100 stone at this point. What is he saving that stone up for? Is he building a castle? Doesn't he know, doesn't he know the Mongols don't have access to castles? Somebody show, someone tell Sho. And this is the crazy thing about, about the Mongols. Now, I, I spoke earlier. I said, you know what? It's, it's, it's basically good game, the fact that uh, Salami has won the water so hard. And we can see that Sho, if he had actually used this stone, you know, like if he'd been going, say, double double hand cannon here. <laughs> if he'd been going double hand cannon here, he'd be absolutely fine. No, in all seriousness, um, if he'd been going like double archers or anything like that, just combine that with a single ram, he would be absolutely stampeding over his opponent's base. But hindsight is 20 right now, isn't it? And now going to be coming in back once again on this raiding and uh, managing to pick off the first villager going down. No other villagers going down. And now we've got some lancers coming out in response to this. No upgrades on either of these guys. So they are just very, very raw. But now the Mongols going to be trying to escape. And you can see those lancers doing Doing their best a little bit bit of an attack now on the front line as well as the demo takes its shot and uh it sinks his battleship towards the front we've also got more and more lancers running in they do have that speed buff on 1.62 movement speed here so show gonna be trying his best blacksmiths going up we see the double blacksmith another stable on the back line as well and uh now gonna be heading straight towards that all important wood line and looking to Looking to isolate those uh, those all important wood choppers. Income per minute. You see, uh, we've got Salami actually sitting on minus zero income per minute. Uh, that is not a stack overflow. Uh, that is uh, that is just how bad his economy is right now. Uh, he does have a he does have a fishing boat out here though, so probably going to be feeling a little bit better about it. But. Uh, We'll take a look at his base. We'll see what text he's got going for himself. So at the moment, getting the veterancy upgrade for his... Is that Horseman? Yeah, Horseman. Uh, what else does he have? So he's getting a whole bunch. So he's got Wheelbarrow coming in, double Broad Axe as well, and Survival Techniques, uh, as well as going to be getting that all-important Fertilization Technique. Uh, when it comes to the uh, text he's getting, also he's getting in Bloomery at this stage. So nice and early for him still. Uh, still yet to secure the majority of his text. Going to be losing this dock. So passing over 100 resources to his opponent and really a distinct lack of resources at this time doing a little bit of uh, micro or, or macro rebalancing right there but uh really starting to beg the question salami where are your where are your units he does have the uh, the all important lancers coming out but one of the things to note he doesn't actually have any scholars garrisoned inside these stables so i'd love to see that from him uh, just even garrisoning one or two scholars in there would really help him out. There was one that did have enough, but now he's going to be coming over. Are there any? There's no explosive dows in here. That could have been absolutely terrible if that was the case. Just one, but he's actually looking to do a pretty nice body block here over the uh, the top of the crossing. Managed to leave a little bit of a gap there, so his enemy did get through. I would expect we do see a villager coming out to rebuild a dock. Yeah, we see three villagers now coming out to rebuild a dock over here, but uh, that was very close to being completely just GG there for Salami with a victory potentially but uh, now going to be moving out going to be putting a dock a little bit closer to home here pretty far away from the fish but uh, undoubtedly he's going to be happy that he's going to be able to at least utilize this fishing economy a little bit and now we see still no upgrades yet at the moment for show we'll check in on him and see what he's up to he's got the triple lancer in queue at the moment Gers with no upgrades at the moment blacksmith with no upgrades at the moment he does have the improved siege engineering though that is one important thing to note but there's absolutely no units on the map right now to actually build actually i take it back there's four archers these guys could get a traction trebuchet out here uh, they could also be getting some springles out. And now we can see those all-important fishing boats doing their best to get over here and uh, and doing it. But now plenty of lancers coming out. No, uh, we've actually got plus one upgrade. We do have bloomery coming out for the lancers of Salami. Show yet to get any upgrades at this stage and really just fighting it off with the lancers. And now our first sacred site of the game going to get finally taken here by Salami. So it's coming in at 19 minutes. It's a little bit late, I will be honest. But uh, you know what? He's been on the back foot for the majority of the game. And this is probably the safest site he could take. So pretty well played but for him but, uh, down here. Now we'll check in on his opponent. So we've got Show down here towards the south. Gonna be looking to uh, do a lot of gold mining. I tell you what, you gotta be so careful playing around this, Show. You gotta be so, so damn careful. I, I am just... Salami has already used multiple uh, explosive dows. Like, th this is literally one explosive dow away from being good game. You have gotta be so damn careful at these crossings. If that, if that Khan goes down, you need to pull back. No doubt, no explosive dows in here. 
Looks like a couple units heading down towards this way. I'm gonna manage to uh, to actually neutralize this sacred site. We gotta be so. I, I gotta I gotta watch here. I gotta watch here, man. I'm telling you, it is gonna happen. I can smell it, dude. I I, I can smell it like I smell a French baguette on a Tuesday, because. That that's the day I visit. That is. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, though, he's got to be so careful. Lantern now with the plus one upgrade as well. Uh, do we have explosive dows coming out? Still no explosive dows coming out yet for him. Uh, training more fishing boats, so very, very curious. Um, now towards the south of the map, we do have that site being neutralized. Salami in a bit of a difficult spot. Uh, he is... I, I feel like he's getting slowly and slowly pushed in. Now, one of the things I, I do love about these civilizations, compare them with my main civilization, which is China, uh, you don't actually have to go more than one town center. You can basically play one town center for the entire game, and you're able to actually utilize the economic bonuses of your civilization and just stick on the one TC. So how do you do that? Well, for the Delhi, it's by training scholars. So you can see that we've got three, four scholars here, five, six scholars here. We've got a seventh scholar in... Oh, excuse me, in there. And he's, at the same time, he's going to be getting those techs, which are for free. So that is how he's building up his economy. And by the same token, for the Mongol player, he's able to do the same thing through through things like Step Red Out or through Deer Stones, which is going to be buffing up the, the movement speed of his villagers. You can see right there, they are 1.29 movement speed. So get a nice little movement speed buff there. Now, speaking of movement speed buff, there it comes out now. And we, these bad boys are up to 2.16 movement speed a second. Going to be getting nice and buffed up here. And looking to chase down this hunt, but... Or hunt. Looking to chase, chase down this hunting party uh, from his opponent. But obviously with the much faster veteran horseman, 1.88 movement speed. They're going to be absolutely no challenge for uh, the uh, Lancers. Which say 1.94 movement speed, but the truth is it's 1.62. Now actually uh, breaking away. And take a look at this. We actually spot a, uh, a little bit of a push happening right now from Salami. Salami in a bit of a difficult spot as the majority of reinforcements coming through here are going to get tapped on more lancers this is really a lancer battle some villagers out here may get caught in the crossfire as well as salami now looks to finally turn on his opponent he does have the upgrade advantage at this point and we hear the wallalols going off where's the wallalol going off i don't know exactly where it is it's down here towards the south oh he manages to take a couple of villagers he was trying his best to get all of those villagers he was literally going for a villager steal Oh, that could have been huge. That could have been absolutely massive. Salami going to be trying his best. I'm so glad I found that. I was very scared for a few seconds. But it looks like Sho is going to manage to skate out of that one with just only a few villager losses. And uh, he's going to be a happy camper. But now throwing down an outpost here. We see an outpost coming down in response from these players. And it looks like the majority of Salami's army does get cleaned up. So he's going to be having to head back to the deli. And I'm not talking about the Sultanate, baby. I am talking about the meat producer? Meat what, what do you even call that? The meat, uh, the meat warehouse? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. But now another Wallalol. Look how many Wallalols are coming out here. They, look at the relics that this guy's got. It's absolutely ridiculous. He's got so much mobility with his monks as well. He's going to be trying again. Gets another Wallalol. He's got to wake up. Joe has got to wake up. Joe has got to wake up. It, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. They, they, they're all salamis now. They are all salamis. He wins over the lances of his opponent. More lances up towards the north. And this is where... Is this where it starts to, to turn back time? Like, th th it, it starts to really get ridiculous at this point. The fact that he's able to start wallalolling like this... Especially when you consider the composition of his enemy, where it's basically all melee units at this point. You really got to start wondering, is is that going to be the icing on the cake? Sacred Sight now going to get neutralized down here as well. And more and more Wallalols probably going to be happening in this game. This could be the most Wallalol game ever. This this could be... How many have we seen already? We saw the triple Wallalol in the base. So that was three. Four down here. Fifth one here, sixth one here. I'm going to be counting the Wallalols. We're going to be doing a Wallalol count throughout this game. Now, speaking of Wallalols, we've got some Springles on the front line that are going to be going up for show, and he is going to be looking to... Oh my gosh, he's got a Springled. He's got a Springled in placement. He's one-shotting one these villagers. Oh my god, you are so cheeky, Salami. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Going to be cleaning up this, uh, this down to the south as well. This is so, so cheeky. He won't even realize... He won't even realize. He'll, he'll just be like, what the heck is going on down there? Well, how are my villagers dying? Look at it. Now he's getting the Fortifier outpost upgrade. This is so, so annoying to deal with. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Fishing boat's going to be coming out. Getting picked off by a couple of those springlets. And I'm really waiting at this point for at least, you know, one explosive dow to come out. We just see one here. It's going to make all the difference. And I think that outpost is going to go down. Does it get off any more? I don't think it manages to get off any more shots, or at least not on any villagers. It does go down. So very, very cheeky from him. I do like that a lot. Now, if we take a look over from the perspective of Salami, 
Uh, Salami hasn't actually scouted this third sacred site yet. He doesn't know where that one is. He knows where the second one is, uh, but obviously it's in the middle of the map, so it's a little bit difficult to try and contest that. So he is going to be only really coming down for this one, and now going to be sitting on top of this gold mine, very, very close to his, uh, to his home base. Do note that there's no way actually across here at this point. Uh, so he does have to work his way back here. So I would kind of like to see a wall come out from him, even if it was just out over towards here. So just a nice little wall around there. And now we've got that action down here towards the south. No wall of lols for Salami today, at least not yet. And uh, now the push begins to really start to shove its way across that all-important uh, gap that gets bridged. And now the enemy going to continue neutralizing that sacred site. We can see, geez, he's got some he's got some units down here. Eight lances. Salami in a bit of a difficult spot. 2k score lead right now for show. Uh, significant. Very, very significant. And um, I, I would say that there is a heavy advantage at this point. He is trying to get some elephants out, but against the Springholds, it's really not going to be a lot. And you see those men at arms there. Now, one of the things he can do is use that force charge, and we see them coming in right now at light speed, doing their best to try and get on top of the enemy. Uh, Springles and going to be able to do that going straight for the ones at the back doing a great job of just surrounding them and getting in on top the M Mongols the Mongols are in a difficult spot now as the Wallalols begin to run in he's going to have to turn these ones around here he goes he goes for the triple Wallalol as, as, again at the same time he's trying his best to get out of there but look he can't actually do it he uses the movement speed arrow and it takes out half of the army we have truly got so many Wallalols this game as three more Wallalols go down this is absolute lunacy at this point. This is how Delhi players are taking over the ladder. We've seen this in continuous games. They just move out all of these monks. They bring them in at lightning speed. We see... He's de did he just delete those? He, I think they were... Oh, they were bugged. They were bugged. There's this bug that happens. Oh, there's this bug that happens. After you wallow, your monks can't move. And so he had to delete the monks. That, that's essentially what happened there. If you're wondering, why did those monks just die on the ground? That is why. He's got to turn that one around again. So Salami really looking insane at this point. You can see the score is still down heavily, despite being in a favorable military advantage. We'll take a quick stock take. 61-46 compared to 58-23. So a significant lead for Salami at this point. As he begins to push in now, veteran spearmen on the front line coming in with that all-important elephant doing their best and it really looks like triple wallalo is becoming meta it is so difficult to try and stop this they run in they've got that extra movement speed you can see them coming in now 1.5 movement speed they literally move as fast as a lancer does so if we can find a Lancer that's not affected... So these Lancers are affected by the YAM network, so they're going to be running at 1.87. The base movement speed for a Lancer is 1.62. And so the issue is you can't really reposition against the Wallalol because it just comes in so quickly. And you can try and snipe them down with your Springles, but there's three of them. So you've got to, like... You really got to do the math in your head, and you're like, all right, well, if, if, if a Scholar's got 90 HP and my Springle does 60 damage and he's got no armor, then it takes two shots for a Springle to kill the thing, and now I have to manually move it. But at the same time, like, the men at arms are burning down my Springle so I've only got one Springled left, so the Wallalol manages to get off, captures my entire army, and I lose the game. But speaking of all of that, we do have Sho beginning to push out right now. He's got, managed to somehow whip up an awesome army. He's still got a thousand stones sitting back here stockpiled. He really needs to get this Uvu pumping on these units, but one of the things to note, there's no stables up here. Ideally, he just wants to be going ham on those stables. Now, he's got to be careful because Salami does have control of the water, and we've talked about this all, all game. I've been waiting for it. I've been waiting for an explosive Dow to come out and hit this land army all of these fishing boats are doing their best and look at this a little bit of a sneaky town center down here towards the south asia it's just going to be the step right out oh does that does that buff up normal rates as well i think it just buffs up gold mining doesn't it speaking of gold mine though there's going to be a lot of gold going down here now as the attack speed arrow comes out on the back line the crossbows are doing their best do we have any wallalols coming in it doesn't look like it at this stage we do have an, an enemy army uh in infantry uh you neutralizing that sacred site. Apologies. And now we can see that the uh, the men-at-arms are doing pretty decent to hold off on the south, but towards the north, there is a bit of an overflow happening. The, on the back line, these crossbows are doing a heap of work here, and it looks like that war elephant is really what's going to be the destruction here. But uh, once again, show managing to come out on top. No wallalols in the battle this time. Meant it was very difficult for Salami to actually hold on. Towards the south, that fight continues on. Salami going to be trying his best. There are five villagers inside this outpost. And you can see just how little damage it's doing. He's, he don't, it doesn't actually have plus one ranged. So only the plus two attack and plus two uh, melee defense. And now Sho going to be pushing in once again. But Sho doesn't have a lot of siege. And that's important to note. So he needs to do his best to actually get some all-important battering rams up. Let's see if he actually does it. Still no explosive douse out. At least not yet. Another outpost going to be going down. More and more lances down here towards the south, and I think Sho might be pushing in for the kill at this point. 
So once again, Salami getting pushed onto the back foot. Don't test him. He does have all five relics that are sitting there inside, ready to go, ready to pop at a moment's notice. And keep in mind, he, he can just keep making you know, scholars from his Dome of the Faith. He makes them really cheap. 75 gold. He can just run those bad boys in anytime he likes. And now we do indeed have that battering ramp. Gonna be going down. So this triple, this triple Walla Lol meta is genuinely happening. And I am absolutely amazed to see it. Like, if, if, that is the best way to say it, I think. Uh, it, it is absolutely insane. Scholar towards the north going to be finding up this sacred site as well. So he's going to be very happy. This one did get neutralized, though. And uh, now going to be looking to be in a bit of a difficult spot, Salami is, as he tries his best to hold on. He is gathering up all of these units. Now we can see there's no Scholars in this building at the moment. There's three in this one. None in here, so he needs to try and get these Scholars out. I don't think this one can ho actually hold up any Scholars. Just, he's got two more up here. He could potentially go for five Wollalols from that. There is... Oh, actually, there's a Scholar that's outside right now. So it's a single Scholar. So he could go for four Wollalols here. Um, he's going to be trying his best to get this last Scholar out, but I don't... I think it spawns over on this side. Indeed, it does. And going to be trying to run through, get sniped in the back, and now going to be heading out. Where are those Wollalols? Where are those Scholars? Horsemen going to be running out and landing there on the, the back line here. The crossbow is going to be trying to deal with them, but not having a lot of luck. Men at Arms going to be out on the front line here as well, fighting up against those Lancers and the Men at Arms of his opponent. Village is going to be running in here and looking to get... They're actually looking to do a bit of repairing, so I thought they would have been going over to Siege the Battering Ram. In, in the background, we do hear that Sacred Site is getting taken, and Salami looks like he will hold a bite just for the moment. We'll see how well he does, though, as we head towards this mid-game. Score lead still in the favor of his opponent, but keep in mind he is playing the Mongols, so we can't really observe that. Plenty of uh, units coming out here, and Salami trying his best. Look at the micro that's coming out from him. A lot of these units are very low HP, and 3 HP it does manage to get away. Towards the back line now, the uh, all-important Lancers are going to be going down to those uh, those horsemen, and now capturing that sacred site towards the north, and Shoei's going to be aware of it, spotting it out now knowing that his opponent is up there. But keep in mind, he doesn't want to win the game with it. He just wants that juicy, juicy gold trickle, and that's exactly what he's going to get. Joe, once again, sitting on more than a 1,000 stone at this point, so he needs to get out. I, I don't know why he's not just going double production on men-at-arms or double uh, lancer production at this point. He could really just push in. New Khan has now risen. He, he, uh, oh, my God, the lancers actually beat. The two lancers beat, like, the seven horsemen. Uh, but it uh, looks like the eighth horseman is going to come along. Look how little damage it's going to do. It's going to... One more shot should do it. There it goes going down, but uh, I, I think in this position, what does Sho need to do? He needs to push in with Springles and Men at Arms. I think that's just the most, the deadliest combo, and then if your opponent is also mixing Men at Arms, then you should be looking to sprinkle a little crossbows in. Don't go too crazy with it, but you want to have a lot of Men at Arms, so that's the big that Sho wants to do. By the same token, Salami needs to do the same thing, uh, but he can use Spears instead of Men at Arms because they do have that Force Charge ability, and they're much cheaper, much more effective against those Springles. Uh, and now we're going to see that Scholar running away at lightning speed, trying its best to, to not die. But speaking of forced march, here it comes down across the map. Look at those bad boys running at 2.25 movement speed a second. He is getting over here and he is getting serious. Those men at arms are going to come in. They're going to absolutely clean this up. So he's going to be ultra careful here, Show, because it's highly likely he will lose this entire expansion point. Village is going to be going out. We do see the trading post just there to the west. But now towards the north, it sounds like a wolf is going to be getting on the tail of him as well. And he does spot out these reinforced units. We see more villagers coming in. Now, keep in mind, he can't drop a castle down. He's playing the Mongols. So even if he did have the resources, which he does, he's got a thousand stone stockpile. We know that much. Speaking of stockpile, Salami just sitting with a casual 6,000 gold right now. Salami, you, you got to drop down like 48 barracks at this point, my friend. <laughs> that is that is absolutely wild, dude. Men at arms here going to be absolutely fine against these, uh, these spearmen. Going to be able to clean them up. Salami now going to be clicking up to the next stage, dropping down the Palace of the Salt. No surprise there. The uh, Hussar Academy is bugged at the moment, so it doesn't get played. Unfortunately, a lot of these Delhi landmarks are just bugged, or a lot of these Delhi units are just bugged. Uh, so they don't get a lot of play, unfortunately. Things like the Tower of Victory, aka the Tower of Defeat, uh, and uh, also the uh, the Palace of... Uh, Palace of the Sultan is technically also bugged. Uh, 53 villagers, just going to be putting down this landmark. You know, yeah, fair enough. 53. Yeah, why not? You know, because you can. Just, you just flex in at that point, I feel, Salami. So now Salami going to be uh, doing his best. We'll take a look over at what upgrades he looks to get as he enters into the next age. So I'm expecting that we do see... We, oh my lord, do we ever. We've got one, two, three, four elite upgrades coming through. And this is the one of the things that I talk about with the Delhi. So they've got, in my opinion, they've got two uh, windows to attack. 
early castle, early imp. And the reason why is because of this. They get all of their elite upgrades for free. They get all of their age, uh, all of their age three upgrades for free. So it's, it's 700 gold. Each one of those is 700 gold. So you're getting four of these upgrades, all 700 gold. That's like 2,800 gold. You do the same thing with all of your military upgrades, 2,800 gold. It is a huge amount of gold. And now Salami going to be pushing into his enemy's base. Show looking like he might be in a bit of a difficult spot here as his pastures do slowly get torched down by the veteran spearman that is soon to be elite spearman because he has reached that all-important imperial agent is pushing in here looking like he actually wants to go for the kill at this point salami now down towards the south gonna be fighting out with his opponent and finally losing this but keep in mind he's held the sacred site this entire time i don't think his opponents actually realize that he's still got the sacred site down there so it's still trickling gold he is a very happy camper to back towards the base of Salami. He's going to be absolutely fine on this front if his enemy does try to push him from this angle. One of the things to note is Sho has managed to put a single unit on both of these sacred sites. He's neutralized them and now going to be doing it with this third one as well. But at the same time in his base, he's lost a lot of his pastures. Now keep in mind, these pastures are very, very expensive. We have a look on at the villages. Pastures are going to cost him... Where are they? There they are. 150 wood here. That's 300, 600, 900, 1200, 1350 wood. That right there is the 15th hundred... Uh, bit of wood. So that is a huge amount of wood to lose right there. And we do see more pastures going up on the back line. That is the food source for the Mongol player. And you cut off their food source and you are going to be in a very good spot as your enemy to your Mongol player. But now we spot, we do a little bit of a stock take. 60 villages, 19 military uh, population. So 60 and 19, remember that, compared to 71 and 45. So a significant military advantage for Salami at this point. Salami beginning to mass up in his own base. He does have that beautiful elite upgrade. You can tell by all those golden shields, golden swords, golden spears, golden hats. It's gold everywhere, baby. And Salami is absolutely loving it. Speaking of gold, can we just talk a little bit about this all-important golden elephant? Yes, it is absolutely beautiful. But now back towards uh, Salami's base. He is going to be losing this gold mine now. Keep in mind, there's only 940 gold on there. He's not particularly worried at this point. More expansion points now. He doesn't know about this gold mine up here. Obviously, he knows about this one. Uh, he should be able to defend this with a backlot or two. Maybe you can get a Zebek out. Uh, I think that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, Zebek, I think. Uh, but that should be able to defend that pretty well. Uh, we're still yet to see any real uh, explosive dows go off. I would have loved to have seen an explosive dow or two going off on the uh, the land army, but nothing quite yet. And take a look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, Salami. Now we're talking, baby. Look at this. Let's do a, let's do an F4. We've got eight barracks up at this point. It, look at that. That right there, that is what you call delicious. Uh, Salami really feeling good about himself right now. Going to be getting that plus, uh, plus three upgrades as well. Do we have a university up yet for Salami? I'm just going to do a F6, I think it is. There it is. University is going to be up for Salami as well. So, uh, Madrasa rather. Going to be coming up at the back, uh, for him. And now Step Redoubt needs to be careful. This Step Redoubt does, I hope it's got the upgrade. I think he's probably going to have the upgrade. I'll double check the Uvu. Give me a second. Oh, he doesn't have the upgrade. He doesn't have it. He's probably going to be losing that. That's going to go down. It's burning now. A thousand HP to go. Villager going to try and heal it up, but I think it's just going to go down. So this is a really important landmark. You do not want to be losing this one. It does go down. So it's going to take a long time for him to heal this one back up. You can see it's about 10 a tick uh, for each one of those villagers. So you're talking about 70 a tick. I think it has to get back up to 100% HP before you can actually uh, pick it up and pack it up. That sort of thing. So he probably should have moved it away, but uh, nonetheless, he's still trying his best. Now the elite... Uh, Men at Arms going to be running in underneath the base of Joe, and Joe going to be doing his best. He's got so many villagers under here. Look at all of the dead sheep as well. Is that is 23 dead sheep in there. Oh my lord, you got to spread that out. That looks like three dead sheep to me. That is an absolute feast right there, my friend. Joe now going to be uh, having a bit of a bit of a struggle as this step redoubt is going to go down again. Uh, we do another stock take, 78 villagers for Salami at this point. Show sitting on 46 in a very dire position. Salami actually pulling ahead significantly in score. So heading up to age four, getting those elite upgrades are really what has done it for him. Combined with those Walla Lols, and you really got to ask yourself the question, is the Walla Lol, is it taking over? Because I'm starting to feel like it is. It is just, it becomes so hard to push Delhi, especially with these melee units. Like, how do you, how do you take them out? Obviously, there's a lot of ways to neutralize it, but as I mentioned earlier, if you're up against three Walla Lols, first and foremost, they're running in super duper fast. Second of all, they've got that 90 HP, which is, uh, you know, like you, you have to kind of calculate that and you have to make this decision in your head very, very quickly. Am I going to fight? Am I going to flee? That is the question. And we saw that show even looked to flee. But there was a little bit of mis-timing, miscalculation on how fast his units moved, and he lost his entire army. 
So a really difficult spot for him. Hand Cannon is going to be coming out again here for show. He is going to have those double madrasas in. And it looks like Good Game actually just got called. It looks like Good Game just got called. The, it looks like show is tapped out. The men at arms, the hand cannon ears, the elephants are too damn much. If you've enjoyed these games, guys, I'm going to link both of these guys, both of their Twitches. Make sure you go check them out. They are incredible players, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this cast. I'll catch you in the next one.